Imagine this was actually a thing, RuneScape in virtual reality. Well, we're actually not too far off. What you just saw was a bit of After Effects, Orbivocula shots in Lumbridge, and my character from the game Blade and Sorcery. Mix all of this together and we have a decent looking RuneScape VR project, just not a playable one. But that doesn't mean you can't experience RuneScape in VR. I've talked about a RuneScape VR project in some of my past videos, and thanks to some of the very talented individuals that we have in the community, there's a lot of stuff to check out that's already out there, and a lot of stuff to look forward to. But before we whip out the Dragon Dagger again, I'd like to present the sponsor of today's video, Raycon. Lumbridge Castle is burning. We need a mighty adventurer to save us. We have to find Soup. He'll know exactly what to do. Oh look, he's right there. Soup, help us. What's he doing? Can he not help us? Oh my god, no. He can't hear us. He's wearing his Raycon earbuds. Raycon earbuds are everything you need in a pair of earbuds. They're comfortable, come with a variety of fit options, are offered in multiple colors and patterns, and come with a carrying case that can charge the earbuds four times on a single charge. I've been using these recently when going to the gym or on a run, and the comfort and sound quality has been amazing. The Everyday E25 earbuds are their best model yet with six hours of playtime, Bluetooth pairing, and a compact, noise-isolating fit. I mean, guys like Snoop Dogg and Mike Tyson are using them, so they've gotta be good. The earbuds start at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market and if you guys go to buyraycon.com slash suprs you get 15% off your order and even better deal. Link in the description to check them out. A couple of months ago I got in contact with a guy named Connor. Connor had posted a video on his channel featuring a project that I found super interesting, rebuilding a part of RuneScape in virtual reality, in specific Varrock. About a year ago, Connor got his first VR headset and began playing the game Blade and Sorcery, a VR medieval fantasy sandbox with full physics-driven melee, ranged, and magic combat. A game with melee, ranged, and magic. Sounds like another game I know. Now this game has thousands of mods available, maps, weapons, you name it. He came across a mod for the game called the OSRS Weapons Pack, which features dozens of weapons from old school RuneScape that can be wielded in the game. Seeing these weapons in game gave Connor the idea to start his own VR project, building Varrock Square from scratch, and after months of working on models, assets, and map building, he made his map available to the public. Varrock West Bank, something I'm sure all of you recognize right away, but in this bank, you can head behind the counters. You can get a close-up view of the gold-filled chests, though just like in old school, you can't reach them. If you want, you can spend some time behind the counter, pretending what it would be like to be a banker on RuneScape. The first steps I took outside the bank felt special, as if I was actually in-game walking around Varrock. I visited the square where I saw the legendary Varrock fountain, I got my hands on a tinderbox, and I read what was new in the Varrock Herald. I decided whether or not it was worth stealing some bear fur, and I even went to visit Zaf's battle staff shop and managed to get myself some law runes and a staff of fire. I had a look around the Varrock General Store which had loads to offer. Runes, bars, hammers, bowls, essence, you name it. I even managed to find some GP hidden away under the counter. I made sure to be as careful as possible as I didn't want to knock over anything and cause a mess. I think I did a good job. I checked out the Varrock clothes shop and found a camo top, mime top, and some party hats. I had a drink at the Blue Moon Inn, placed a pot on a ranged, threw some tomatoes at non-existent prisoners, and wished that Aubrey would let me into his rune shop. 
I even managed to smith an adamant scimitar in Horvick's armor shop. Nothing like making the magic happen in first person. Totally not fake. Seeing all of this in first person made Varrock feel massive. It took me half an hour to walk around and see everything, although it may take me longer than others since I like to look a bit closer at things in hopes of finding secrets and easter eggs. I also for some reason felt the need to knock down everything I could, it just felt so satisfying. I also found out I'm not strong enough to pull up a cabbage, so I should probably train strength some more. I really enjoyed walking around and seeing Varrock from a new perspective. Although some things are missing like the Varrock church and castle, most of it is there and is represented fairly accurately in terms of scale and distance. Keep in mind that Connor has been working on this mainly solo for almost a year and he's modeled and designed almost everything on his own, so I'm not going to be too overly harsh here. In fact, I really only have praise for Connor and the time and effort he's put into it, but Connor. Please fix. I could spend another 20 minutes walking around this place and showing off what the map has to offer, so in the description of this video I will leave a full length unedited version of me just walking around the map if you guys would like to check that out and see everything that it has to offer, but I'm just going to jump straight into this video into the absolute best part fighting some barbarians. As I mentioned earlier, Connor was inspired by a mod called the OSR's Weapons Pack, made by Butters and Sorcery. This mod allows you to equip a load of different RuneScape weapons in VR. Can I just say that equipping a pair of Dragon Claws gave me the largest boner I have ever- The mod pack lets you equip a bunch of awesome RuneScape weapons, my personal favorites being the Dragon Scimitar, Dragon Dagger, Rapier, and Wilderness Sword. You can also equip an Abyssal Bludgeon and Scythe, and I realized how awkward it would be to attack with these things in real life. I mean, they're massive. We even have unique weapons like the Karis, a Decorative Sword, Wolfbane, Brine Saber, Dragon Sword, Abyssal Dagger, and a Ceridoman Sword. Scale-wise, some of these weapons may be a bit too small or too big, but I'm not too fussed. It was just awesome seeing them from this perspective. But you know what would be even more awesome? Being able to fight people with these weapons in the map. That would be cool. Well, you can. you can even safe spot them. In order to make this project happen, Connor used Blender for the models, a free and easy to use piece of software. Blade and Sorcery uses Unity as its game engine, so that's what he uses as well. He says that in order to take on a project like this, you'll need to be motivated and persistent because you will have those days where you're sat looking at your half-finished project, things keep on going wrong, and you end up asking yourself why you're even bothering. Just keep at it, keep on learning, watching YouTube tutorials, and eventually, piece by piece, you'll get through it. If you guys have any interest in helping Connor out with this project, whether it's helping him with modeling, map designing, suggestions, or ideas, make sure to join his Discord. I'll leave a link to it in the description of this video. I'll also leave links to the Varrock map file, as well as the OSR weapons pack if you'd like to check them out for yourself. Oh, and he's also working in Lumbridge in VR as well, so we have something else to look forward to. So what other options do we have for a virtual reality RuneScape experience? A RuneScape client that offers HD remastered graphics has shown up a couple of times since the release of Old School. The most recent one, shown off by Jordan Toddy, is probably the best one yet. His client allows you to experience RuneScape with not only upgraded 3D graphics, but allows you to change things like the weather and the time of day. 
Pretty much every area in the game looks like RuneScape, but feels like a new game in terms of the graphics. Now, whether you like the client or not, it does feature something that plays a role in virtual reality, the possibility of a first-person view. A couple of months ago, when Toddy showed off the client on stream, he showed himself playing the game on his client in first-person, getting up close and personal in places like the fight caves and barrows. This is where the VR portion comes in. Since Toddy's client is made in Unity, it's technically possible to add a VR option. Virtual reality support would just need to be enabled for the project. This is of course also a case of easier said than done. Since I don't know much about Unity or adding VR support to a project, I'm not going to tell you all that it's as easy as checking a couple of boxes and we're good to go. So for those of you who know more than I do, what would it take to add VR support to a Unity project that runs through the RuneScape client? While we don't exactly have a VR project here, we have an interesting look at old school from a different perspective and we know that remastered graphics and a locked first person view in the game is possible two important steps towards working on a playable RuneScape in virtual reality. By utilizing a mod called Vivecraft, I can play VR Minecraft. Now, I don't play Minecraft, but there is such a thing as RuneScape Minecraft. It's called Mindscape, a recreation of RuneScape in Minecraft. The combination of Vivecraft and Mindscape do technically allow for a virtual reality RuneScape experience. The server allows you to do pretty much everything RuneScape and features a handcrafted map that covers almost all of the free-to-play area. I spawned in on the server and made it my goal to complete Tutorial Island to see how it felt in VR versus on a PC. Although it wasn't necessarily meant for VR, it worked pretty well. The controls took a while to get used to, but after a bit of time and practice, I was able to get the hang of it. I can tell a lot of time and effort has gone into this server as well, as it's a pretty authentic experience. The neat thing about playing this is that you will actually gain XP for moving around in real life, and by that I mean, if I want to chop a tree, I can either hold the trigger on my index controller, or physically swing my arm back and forth while holding my axe. So, this will kind of give you the feeling that you're actually training your skills by mimicking the movements holding the controller. Like I mentioned earlier, you don't have to play this in VR. In fact, I don't think many people have tried it in VR. The majority of players will just play it through the Minecraft launcher on their PC, but it is possible and it works, but it's Minecraft, it's not RuneScape. It may replicate the RuneScape skill system and map, but to me, as long as it has the graphics that Minecraft has, it remains a let's call it RuneScape Minecraft minigame. To me, there are two perfect possibilities for virtual reality RuneScape. The first one is the one you saw earlier, an area of RuneScape recreated in a game engine that features things like RuneScape weapons, NPCs, quests, and everything RuneScape, but that is a lot easier said than done. I bought my headset because of Half-Life Alex. When Valve announced that my favorite game series of all time was getting another game, I immediately grabbed myself a Valve Index in order to get the best experience possible. And Boy did it deliver. Half-Life Alex is one of the best games I've ever played and is most likely the greatest game ever released on a VR system. So far, Valve was the first major studio to go all in on a VR project, and it showed. The graphics are breathtaking and the attention to detail is amazing, but the crazy thing is, it's not a perfect game. You can argue that a lot should have been done differently, but it's the first game of its kind and will hopefully be a stepping stone for more major VR games. Imagine Half-Life Alex graphics on Connor's map, or even imagine Toddy's graphics on Connor's map. It's just an idea, not something necessarily possible. What Connor and Toddy have done is awesome, and maybe with help from some of you watching, you can help make their creations better than they already are, something I'm sure they'd welcome. Another question you might have is, is it possible to play on a RuneScape client in VR? Well, as you saw earlier in the clips of Toddy's client, I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility. I don't doubt it will ever happen, I just can't promise you when. A lot of these projects are made by people who work on them in their free time, so they don't have a company dedicated to helping them out, whether it's with funding or developing. As someone who has very little experience with coding, programming, modeling, designing, I can say it'd be cool to have, but it wouldn't be fair of me to complain that it's not a thing. I can only hope to bring more attention to the idea of it being a possibility. Virtual reality itself is still a fairly new concept, and the biggest thing stopping many people from trying it out is the cost of entry, seeing as you'll not only need to invest in a headset, but also have a decent computer. So if you're looking at buying the best headset available, the Valve Index will run you almost $1,000. Mid-range ones like the HTC Vive or Oculus Rift S are around $400, and a lower-end one like a Windows Mixed Reality headset is around $200. I won't lie, I was skeptical when I purchased mine as I wasn't sure if I'd really like it, but so far, I have been blown away. It is absolutely worth the money I spent, and I've been able to experience games in a way I never thought I could. So where do we go from here in terms of RuneScape VR? Well, to me, the biggest thing is to show Connor and Toddy's support with their map creations. Please make sure to check out Connor's map on Nexus Mods, as well as show him some love in his Discord, where he'll be posting updates and progress as he continues to work on his Varrock recreation. 
Next, we've to hope that more people like Connor, Toddy, and Butters and Sorcery become motivated to begin projects of their own that involve RuneScape and VR, whether it's a recreation of an area, modeling things like weapons and armor packs, or working on a super top-secret advanced VR mod that places you straight into Lumbridge on the main game. Games like Skyrim and Fallout 4 are also available to play in VR and also feature some RuneScape mods like God Sword and Armor Pack, so that's also a possibility. It's also new to me, and I'm sure to many of you as well, and I'm looking forward to making another one of these videos in the future when hopefully more information is available. I hope this video was able to introduce you all to what's currently being offered in the world of VR RuneScape. Thanks for watching.